Hello and welcome to the Yoga Life podcast with me, Kevin Boyle. It seems a bit strange talking to a camera. This is the first vlog I've done and I know that a lot of YouTubers, if I can call myself YouTuber, <laughs> start out with like really explosive intros and loads of jump cuts and flashy graphics, but I am not going to do that. One, I don't know how, and two, I want to keep it as simple as possible. So this podcast is a weekly show where I spend time speaking to people who are yoga teachers, yoga practitioners, people who are interested in personal development, and people I find interesting. And if I find them interesting, I hope that the people listening and now watching also find them interesting. Lately though, I've decided to change up the content. And last week was the first week where I didn't post an episode. Because I wanted to take time and to take stock of what I was doing. Or why I was doing this podcast at all. Because it takes a lot of work, a lot of setup. And while I do love doing it, it's important, I feel, sometimes in life to take a step back and ask why why are we doing what we do what value does it add so there's going to be a bit of a change going forward i'm still going to do the conversations every week but i'm going to add in this type of content where i'm speaking directly to the camera or directly to you if you're listening just on audio and I'm also going to add in things like, see here, I have a whiteboard over there. Uh, because I, I'm interested in having fun and providing entertainment. Because if something is a bit is fun, is interesting, we're going to watch it. But also maybe some information, some education, things that I've learned since I've started teaching yoga and since I was born <laughs> and that I can maybe share with you. So we have the conversations. We have the one-to-one, -one, like this, me to you. And then the third part of, third type of content I'm gonna create is online classes. So actually movement, meditation, things that involve the body. And uh, so that's that's the three things I'm, I'm aiming to, to provide on this channel. And I hope that it's um, it becomes interactive because since I started this podcast I mean I started in May 2018 that's a year and a half ago and 90% of people that I speak with that I've never met before won't talk about my Instagram won't talk about Facebook um, they'll talk about the podcast that's the first thing they mention so I really believe in podcasting and look at Spotify, for example. They've invested $500 million last year into podcasting. So they see the value in it. And there's less than a million podcasts available compared to all the millions of YouTube channels and hundreds of millions of um, blogs that are around. So I really do believe that podcasting is only going to grow and grow. And I think it's because of the intimacy because I don't edit these at all I don't um, <laughs> I don't really plan them that much I have a, an idea of what I want to say sometimes I'll take some notes but I, I think it's so important that uh, editing is not done because sometimes we feel that we are told we only know uh, about people what they choose to tell us and this is really prevalent in social media. That's my dog barking. Um, this is really prevalent in social media. So what that ends up doing is not making us happier, but making us feel more inferior, more weird. And I believe that this type of communication is, is really, really powerful. Online content for me is a paramount importance for a few reasons. One is, uh, <laughs> I recently discovered that I'm going to be a daddy. So 
this year I'm going to become a father and I want to spend a bit more time in the future at home with my family and therefore if I can produce I'm here in my house if I can produce more and more online content I can that will be there forever it's always going to be searchable it's evergreen content because I don't talk about topical affairs for example like the, the news uh, at the moment we're in the middle of the coronavirus and uh, actually I was supposed to have a class today but uh, a corporate class but they cancelled because we don't know what that's happening with the coronavirus you can hear I've got a bit of a hoarse throat um, I'm fingers crossed I haven't got the virus um, I feel fine apart from that I think it's because last weekend I was um, teaching teacher trainees and I was just speaking all weekend pretty much so my voice has gone a little bit but with with online content it's something that's there forever and Instagram is great but it's so important to build content that's searchable once you put something on Instagram it's gone it's disappeared people just scroll by if you put stuff on YouTube or, uh, or even a blog that's there forever can always be searched and my my hope is that if people <laughs> listen to the podcast or see me and um, speaking they may think hmm he seems all right um, I might one day go to a retreat of his or I might go to a workshop of his because there is an element of trust there you know it's better to, if you know someone if you're familiar with them then you're you're more likely to want to spend your time with them and that's actually um, such an uh, a common thing people say to me I feel like I know you and the truth is they can't they do really because nothing is edited everything is um, from the heart and uh, I think that's the only way to to do this so online content one because I want to spend more time at home two I like to learn I like to challenge myself and all of this, you can see all this setup around you, the, the hopefully quality audio, the quality video is it takes a lot of learning up front, a lot of hard work. And um, but that's the challenge in life for me to, to learn more, to learn new skills is, uh, is it's good for the brain to actually develop um, our skills. And then once it's done, once you've done all the work up front, you've got the, the camera, the mic, you know how to upload, then it's, that's when the fun begins because you start to um, get creative. And um, so as well as the, it being fun, being, being a learning experience, I get to um, spend more time at home and produce this content. And, uh, and also it makes me, it's, it's forced me to be a much better speaker you know I realized that one of the reasons I love doing what I do which is teaching yoga by the way I should have said that at the start if you're first time watching this and uh, training teachers to teach yoga is I love communication I love building relationships and the better I realize my limitations in, in how I communicate and when you record yourself, you sharpen your axe. Is that the right expression? So you, 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 you hone your speaking skills. And I've still got a ton more to learn. But the better I can be at communicating, the better I am at my craft, which is teaching, the better I am at relationships. And the better, if my relationships are good, life is good. Because life is about relationships. Um, the idea behind um, keeping things uh, what's the word raw as it were is that I have come to realize moments of my life where I felt very isolated so this can be and it's weird but I live in a city uh, I've come from a city I come from London and now I live in Dublin but the truth is we spend a lot of time amongst people but it's quite easy to feel isolated in a city everyone's going about their business and I've recognized that 
I love teaching yoga because I get to meet people. I get to be in front of people. And this is hopefully, um, this, I mean, the byproduct of this is maybe to um, bring me in, give me more opportunities to speak in front of people. I used to, uh, when I teach teachers, I used to say to them, okay, everyone, uh, sit around and in a circle, and I'd like you, the, the, the kind of cringeworthy thing of who you are and something interesting about you. And what I've realized is that that doesn't really tell us the whole story. And when we start to realize that we're all a bit weird, we're all a bit strange, this is how we build friendships. This is how we build connection. So I have started to do this task, this exercise in teacher trainings now, where, and this is taken from Alain de Botton, who's a philosopher. He's the chap who runs the School of Life. He's the co-founder, which is a great YouTube channel. He does this exercise with, with a group, which I've started to do, where he'll say, Okay, everyone, turn to the person next to you, someone you've just met, you don't know, and tell them something you regret, something you're ashamed of, and something you feel sadness about. And what we realize when we do this is friendship can only happen where there's vulnerability. We also realize that if we are... Um, open with each other, we understand that life is suffering, as uh, Viktor Frankl says in A Man's Search for Meaning. Surviving is finding some meaning in that suffering. So when you're a yoga teacher and you're going from class to class, from studio to studio, you don't have a team, really. You have a virtual team, WhatsApp groups, but you spend a lot of time on your own. And one of the most destructive character traits we can develop is envy. We are constantly uh, given messages that some people are doing better than us because we're all signaling on our phones. Every time you post something on Instagram, you're trying to signal something. Maybe it's look how early I'm awake or look at what I'm eating or how healthy I am or... Um, my political views and how virtuous I am. So we're constantly signaling, and this is human nature to, to share, to connect. But well, what is happening is that is the highlights. I'm not saying I'm not saying anything new here, and therefore we might then see this person we're envious of as we go from uh, one studio to the other, passing through uh, in between classes. And what happens is we say, "Oh, how's it going?" good how are you yeah I'm good okay see you later but the truth is how are they how are you really we we don't tell the whole story and this is why I believe podcasting is becoming so popular there's something within us that wants to hear conversations that wants to hear the whole story that wants to hear people's failings because that's what makes us human. It's not the fact that life is easy, it's the fact that it's difficult and we have chosen to survive. And that's done through our perception. How we perceive ourselves is of paramount importance to the outcomes in our life. Now, we talk about luck and I wrote a post on Instagram recently about how lucky I am and absolutely, I, I, we have um, fortune in our life, where we're born, what we look like, um, our parents, our loved ones around us. But also, good luck can come to us if we, we're open to it. And this is why I'm, I love movement. I'm, I really, I, every day I move, I have a physical practice. But in terms of value that I want to share. I really want to explore the personal development slash self-help realm because it's done a ton for me. We, yoga will tell us we have stress in our life, 
bad things are going to happen. There's variables that we cannot control. When something happens and there's our response, we have that space between. And that space between is when we choose how to react, how to respond. So stress can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. And I really believe that we can all develop at any stage in our life. When I was younger, while I had a great time, I partied a lot, uh, I was, <laughs> I was gonna say I was a loser, but, um, and Alan de Botton talks about this, how we live in a meritocracy and therefore we're rewarded by, see I'm trying, what I mean about being a good communicator is I'm trying to revisit and revise the language I use casually, because language is so important. It's, it shapes how, how we think. If you look at NLP, Neuralistic Programming, it's the words we use to ourselves and to others program our thoughts. But in this meritocracy, it's said that, especially in American culture, and this feeds through to European culture, that if we work hard, we can have anything. We can all be exceptional. But the truth is, we can't all be exceptional. We can't all be millionaires. <laughs> it's a very small percentage of people, but we're led to believe that we can because this sells um, books, this sells these online courses that are become a millionaire, become uh, lose uh, 20 pounds or a stone in a week of weight. And this is um, a false prophecy. What I'm interested in is not self-improvement, um, but self-acceptance. How can we understand ourselves better? And therefore, how can we understand other people better? If we can do that, then this is going to give us at least the chance to find happiness. So, <laughs> um, you know what? Fair, fair play to my guests that come on my podcast every week. Because when they come to my home, for a start, they're in my home, not their home. Often it's the first time we've met and we've turned, you turn on a camera, you turn on a mic and I'm the one asking the questions. So therefore I don't speak as much as they do and I I'm kind of uh, leading the conversation. But now <laughs> I've got no one to deflect questions off. Um, so I understand that, that feeling of vulnerability. This has given me a new appreciation for the... Uh, with the 80 odd guests that have come to my house and been on, been on the podcast. Um, so I want to talk about the, the selfishness of this podcast for me and why it's so important, I believe, if you're watching this or listening to this, to maybe consider starting a podcast. I have met some of the most skillful, influential, high profile teachers in the world. I've met and spoken with, had one-to-one -one time with people like Keenan McGregor, Patrick Beach, Dicey Decline, Bryony Smythe, and Max Strom, I mean, the list goes on. So when you start a podcast, you get to meet people because they would, I'm sure, welcome free publicity and I welcome learning from them. And there's something very different about having a conversation when the mic is on and there's a camera and we know that once we hit record and I tell them it's not edited that we're locked in we've both got headphones on it's one to one you're sitting two feet from each other and you're looking right into each other's eyes when was the last time you had a chance to sit with someone for over an hour with no distractions no waiter no phone, no music in the background, sit with each other and just speak. And when you know you're being recorded as well, it adds an element of responsibility to get your thoughts across, to share ideas. And I really believe that podcasting is pure yoga. It's, it's connection. I mean, yoga is union, same as the English word yoke, to join together. And when we um, can unify two, two people through a podcast, then we have infinite leverage. We can share that podcast with the world 
forever. So this is unbel unbelievably powerful. Um, I, I do want to talk some more. Um, I'm conscious of my time here. Oh, I've only got like five minutes. So I'm going to answer some questions that I have from some listeners. I actually typed them out. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. Why was there no... First question is, why was there no episode last week? Let's just say there was a miscommunication of a scheduled appointment by my guest and me. Um, but this was a blessing in disguise because now we're doing this. What camera equipment uh, and mic do you use? So initially I used a Zoom H1 or Zoom H1N, which is a handy mic. And you can just do remote recording. So I, I, Patrick Beach, Kino, I did that in my car using a, a Zoom H1. Now I have for this, this is a brand new setup. I have a Rode boom mic overhead which is NTG4+. Plus. I also have uh, a Canon camera, which is 50 millimeter lens, which is lens, which is really good for up close shots. And for my podcast behind me there, the studio, uh, that is a Rodecaster Pro to record its mixing deck, to record the audio with just some Behringer cheap mics. And I use three Sony A6400, is that right? Yes, three Sony A6400 cameras. They have unlimited recording time. So I could record a 10 hour podcast if I wanted to, which I may do one day, you know, that's, that's the excitement of it. It's like crazy the possibilities you can do with podcasting. So yeah, okay, um, a bit more of a technical question here. How to stay creative in your flows? There's only three more questions. Thank you for these questions, by the way. So how to stay creative when you're teaching flows? Firstly, practice what you preach. Do, do yoga, do movement every day and experiment with new things. Be a student, so that means you're going to go to classes and choose a couple of teachers that inspire you. And dare, dare to make a mistake. I, I, you're gonna make a mistake in class, that's gonna happen. Uh, my advice would be to apply a 70-30 rule. 70% of the postures are familiar, 30% of them are brand new. Uh, and you can, don't have to be just creative in your sound, you can be creative in your transitions in your theme in your language um, okay when did you realize your passion for yoga so this when I mean this constantly comes up but it's and it happens almost every day um, I realized that when I worked as a personal trainer I I didn't fit in I was skinny I wasn't into like protein shakes and building muscle and it wasn't for me but I loved the connection between myself and the client and I love the physical aspect of it. And then when I started going to classes in my, when I was 30, I'm now 38, I realized how, <laughs> how weird the people were. I thought there's so many weirdos in these yoga studios. I f actually feel like I fit in here. So the community was the thing that seduced me and um, the physical, mental, spiritual benefits of yoga are gonna last for a lifetime. So, um, what would be, okay, uh, what prompted you to pursue a career in yoga? Well, firstly, I was made redundant from my job. I worked for an AI company and I was teaching my sister yoga posture one day and she said, you could do this for a living. And I'd already started my 200 hour. So I was going to be a yoga teacher part time. And I thought, could I, I didn't, I didn't realize this was really a job. And here we are. <laughs> uh, what would you, what would be your ideal weekend yoga hike sunday roast with the family this is the last question but it's a big one um what's my goals for 2020 so firstly i don't have goals i have a vision that vision long term is to have a retreat center and a house in the countryside therefore to to get there i I'm not, I mean, I'm not looking to get there necessarily, but what I love is these immersive experiences. So teaching an hour long public class is brilliant. It's a great first step into yoga, but I really, really love a whole weekend of teacher training or a, a weekend of workshops, which I'm doing in June, actually in Salt and Soul Sligo. Check out, there's an early bird offer, <laughs> shameless plug. Um, but what I, 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 I want to do is be more connected to my local community. So this is the global community. 
the podcasting, which is great, but to be more involved, to know my neighbours, to live in the countryside, to do outdoor work and just be outdoors a bit more. So I can see myself with family, a couple of dogs, and uh, yeah, living in the countryside, maybe wearing you know one of those uh, puff-up jackets and uh, some Wellingtons. We'll see. I don't know. Um, I mean, asana is always going to be, movement is always going to be important to me, physical work, as it were. But I really want to develop uh, my speaking skills. So once again, to enter into the realm of doing workshops like business of yoga, public speaking for yoga teachers, podcasting for yoga teachers, to actually do a workshop about how to start a podcast. And um, there's more to develop in this area. See, so not just workshops, but also day-long CPDs, continual professional development courses, where I do the course, uh, I offer the course, and it can be like an eight-hour training course that you can then add to your Yoga Alliance hours. So if that interests you, let me know. Um, I also am going to continue to do mentorship. This is something I really love working one-to-one because -one, I um, would have loved more mentorship when I was starting. And you can get where you, you can get going a little bit quicker. Um, what's the, yeah, that's the last question. So yes, that is the first vlog, speaking straight to the camera. I only have a minute left, so I have to wrap this up. Um, more online content. I would like to, um, I'd like my, my kids one day to look back and be like, you know, your dad was really self-conscious about being on camera, but he did it anyway. And, um, and, and that's hopefully inspiring that you have some sort of legacy where you've, um, haven't essentially caved into your own insecurities. Um, yeah, so that is all for me. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review, subscribe since we're on YouTube as well. And, uh, if you'd like to come to my weekend of workshops, again, that's in Salt and Soul in Sligo in uh, second weekend in June, I believe. I also have a retreat happening in April with my other half, Rachel. Um, yes, thank you all for watching, for listening. Click something wherever it comes up here and um, hope to see you again next week. Any questions, let me know. Goodbye.